early 2005, writer Sarah Foggioni and her family made an unusual New Year's resolution. They pledged not to buy anything made in China. And she published the experience in a book, A Year Without Made in China. <laughs> she and her family boycotted products made in China during the year. And soon they realized that it is very difficult to live without the products made in China. According to the book, one-fourth of Chinese exports are sold in the U.S. Fifteen percent of imported goods come from China. Most low-cost goods in the U.S. are from China. Personally, she has nothing against China. Her goal was simply to make Americans aware of how deeply tied they are to the international trading system. She said, I wanted our story to be a friendly, non-judgmental look at the ways ordinary people are connected to the global economy. The book title and contents of the book reminded me of the creation story in the book of Genesis. Because in the book of Genesis, the whole world was made, created by our God. God created the whole universe during six days. After creating all living things in the world, our God created the first humans, Adam and Eve. The creation story is described in the chapter 1 and chapter 2, the book of Genesis. Whenever we read the creation story in the book of Genesis, we are mesmerized and we are proud of ourselves because God has created not only the world, but also human beings, us. We are products of God, made by God, originally made in, in the Garden of Eden. So we are a part of the creation story. If you read the creation story in the book of Genesis, you will notice that there are two different kinds of names for God that appear. The first chapter of Genesis refers to God as Elohim. And the second chapter of Genesis speaks of Yahweh. Elohim and Yahweh. Two different kinds of names appear in the account of the creation. Elohim refers to God who is the creator of the universe, while Yahweh represents personal character of God. The name Yahweh is used whenever the Bible stresses God's personal intimate relationship with human beings. Don't you think it is interesting God is not only the creator of the whole world, the universe, but also willing to make close and intimate relationship with us. Therefore, the creation story in Genesis tells us not only how the world was created, but also how God relates himself with human beings. Old Testament scholars pay attention to how desperately the Israelites 
read the creation story. In the midst of horrific times when Jerusalem, the temple, and major cities in Israel had been attacked by Babylon and Persia. In that time, Babylon and Persia were seen as the countries with the strongest and most powerful God. Facing the difficulties and crisis, the Israelites said to themselves, Did God go away? Is our God strong enough to protect us? Is our God is weaker than the gods of Babylon and Persia? These questions were raised by Israelites. Whenever they were tempted to give up their faith in God, they read the creation story over and over. They confirmed that their God is the creator of the whole universe. They read, they read the story again over and over and they persevered in the midst of the difficulties and believe that someday, eventually, our God, our Creator will deliver us out of the bondage. In this sense, the creation story was not just the account of how the world was created. It was their faith statement. Reading the creation story, they hoped new creation of their situation and their lives. In this sense, the God of universe became their personal God to the Israelites. A couple of years ago, I had a chance to visit my birth country, Korea. Soon I realized that my father was severely struggling with the final phase of prostate cancer. Cancer was already spread out throughout his body. He couldn't take any surgery because of his old age. Only thing he was relying on was to take radiation therapy. Because of the cancer, and radiation therapy, he couldn't digest food well. So he vomited oftentimes before me. It was very hard as a son to see my father struggling and suffering. I had heavy heart. With a heavy burden, I came back to America. As soon as I came back as pastor, I was supposed to lead the Good Friday service. My heart was additionally burdened with the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. The suffering of Jesus Christ and suffering of my father overlapped together. I couldn't bear it anymore. Emotionally, I collapsed. After the Good Friday service was over, I went out to church, my previ previous church. And I happened to look up the sky and I saw the moon. There was a full moon in the sky. I was very mesmerized by it because I saw the same moon a couple of days before in my birth country, Korea. And I said to my church members next to me, I saw the full moon in Korea a couple of days ago, and I can see the, the same moon in America. I traveled back 7,000 miles to come back, and now I'm seeing the same moon in the sky. You might say, what's new about it? <laughs> the moon covers the whole world. So every person in the world is able to see the moon. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it was very special because I almost spent 
16 hours in flight to get back. I thought I traveled enough. I was tired. I was struggling with jet lag. I was struggling with separation anxiety. I was concerned about my father in Korea. I was overburdened with, with the suffering of Jesus. My whole world seemed to be falling apart at the moment. But when I saw the full moon in the sky, I felt omnipresence of God. Even though I traveled 7,000 miles in distance, God was still there. When I visited my birth country, God was there. When I traveled 7,000 miles again, God was still in America. Throughout the journey, I felt God was still there taking care of me. At that moment, I was able to cope with all kinds of stresses, concerns I had. At that moment, the creator of the whole world became my personal God in my life. This is my personal creation story I experienced a couple of years ago. Brothers and sisters, God is our personal God. He wants to make close and intimate relationship with us. God wants to make creation again in our life. Creation is a process. God has created the world in six days. It was not created in a single day. Six days represent process. Through the flood, God has created all things new. When people were in darkness, God came to the world as a human being. Through his crucifixion and resurrection, God created the whole world anew. So Apostle Paul said, Anyone who is in Jesus Christ is a new creation. The old has gone and new has come. Brothers and sisters, what is your personal creation story? When was your last time when God has become your personal God? You might say, I will let it confess God as my Savior. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord three years ago or five or ten years ago. But your creation story needs to continue because creation is ongoing process until Jesus comes back. The God of universe needs to be our personal God. Lastly, I would like to introduce the Psalm 19. In Psalm 19, King David uses two different kinds of names for God. God of the universe and Lord, the personal God. He praises the creation of the world and he accepts the God of the universe as his personal God, personal Lord. And he says, the heavens declare the, the glory of God Holy of the Lord. Let us go to the next verse. The last one, please. Okay, next one. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Throughout this coming week, let us make new creation story in, in our life, in our family, in our community we belong to. Let us make very close relations with us. He wants to make continuous creation story in our life. 
Let us pray. God, thank you for your creation. The whole world is your creation, and we are precious part of your creation as well. Please come to us and make a new creation in our life, in our family, in our community. Please create the purpose of life, meaning of life. Create us from darkness to light. Create us from despair to hope. In Jesus Christ, we are new beginning, new creation. Oh Lord, thank you for new creation which is happening in our life. The most precious name in the world, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.